Hi everyone, welcome to Clo Basic Training. This is the first in a series of videos designed for you to become proficient in Clo. We recommend that you watch the playlist from start to finish, but you're more than welcome to jump around to the topics that you want to learn. Each video has timestamps to allow you to skip ahead. For more advanced tutorials, please check out our tips and tricks videos. Let's get started. This is the Clo workspace. In the top left is the library. The library contains all the default assets that come with the program, things like avatars, garments, hardware and trims, etc. In addition to the default assets, you also have the ability to link folders from your computer into your library so that you can access things quickly and easily. To link a folder, click the plus sign in the top right hand corner of the library. Then navigate to the folder that you want to add. You don't need to click into the folder, simply select it. Now my folder has been added to the bottom of the list of folders in my library. To the left of the Add button is the Download button. This button may have a blue dot beside it when you first download or update the software. The blue dot indicates that there are default library assets available that you have not yet downloaded. Click the Download button to update your library to the latest assets of Clo. To open a folder in the library, just double click into it. The folder's contents show up in this area below. Double click into the subfolders as much as you need. The folder icon at the top with the two dots beside it will take you back one folder. To open something from your library, just double click on it or right click and you'll get a set of options depending on what that file is. For things like fabrics and prints, you can simply click and drag and drop them where you need them to go in Clo. So this is the benefit again of adding your own folders from your desktop to have easy access. You can view all the library folders as icons or lists by clicking this button. When you hover your mouse over the edge of the library, you get an icon with two arrows that allows you to expand or collapse the library. You can fully collapse the library at the top right by clicking the arrow in the library bar. To get it back, click library on the black bar on the left. The shortcut for this is the letter Y on your keyboard. Y also brings the library back. If you make any changes to the folders linked to your library, click the refresh button here. This will update all the folders in your library to match those on your computer. The search bar on the left allows you to search by name for a folder or file within the folder that you're already in. This drop down arrow allows you to sort your folders by category and arrange them in ascending or descending order. Lastly, in the top right hand corner is the reset button. This will take you back to the default library before you added any folders to it. To the left of center is your 3D window. This is where your avatar and your 3D garment will be. The toolbar at the top are all of your 3D tools. To the right of center is your 2D pattern window. Your 2D pattern and your 3D garment are one and the same. Each respective window just allows you to view it in different states. The toolbar at the top of the right window are all of your 2D tools. If you hover the mouse over the center, you get the icon with the two arrows that allow you to adjust the size of the windows. You also have the ability in the top right hand corner to undock the windows. This allows you to move one to a different monitor or you can rearrange them left to right if you prefer the 2D on the left. By hovering over the double black bars in the toolbars, you can undock that set of tools and rearrange them as you wish. If you want your entire toolbar to the left, right, or bottom of the window, you can change that in user settings. Please watch the following video to understand user settings. At the bottom right hand corner, there are buttons to see only your 3D, only your 2D, or both windows at the same time. The button on the far right is your reset button. This is going to reset the layout to the default arrangement. The window in the top right hand corner is the object browser. This is essentially like your bill of materials. 
it houses your fabric, button, buttonhole, top stitching, puckering, and grating. If you click on something in the object browser, its properties are listed below in the property editor. The scene tab will be familiar to you if you have worked in other 3D software. This allows you to navigate to really specific parts of your 3D garment or avatar that you may otherwise have trouble getting to. Things like eyes, eyelashes, and other properties that you may want to edit. As I mentioned before, the property editor displays all of the properties of what you select and allows you to edit them. This is true of things within the object browser, as well as anything that you click on in the 2D or 3D window. Pretty much everything in the program will have editable properties. So we've been through all the main windows and configuration of the layout. Now I want to show you a few extra things. On the far left sidebar, you'll find your file history. This will show you the history of everything you've done since you opened the file. This is useful if you need to go back really far. Here you can find exactly the point you want to get back to without having to edit undo until you find it. 3D State allows you to set a point in the file that you might want to get back to easily. Let's say you're happy with where you are and you'd like to try a bunch of steps but aren't sure if you're going to like them. Click this button to save your 3D State and make it easy to return to that point. By right-clicking, you can delete a 3D state or rename it. You can also rename it by just clicking in the text. You can save multiple 3D states throughout your file. Note that the history and 3D states do not save with the files. They are things that are created only while you're working in the file for as long as you have it open. Close the history by clicking on the arrow in the top right-hand corner. Also in the left sidebar is the modular configurator. This is a block library that allows you to mix and match different parts of a garment and create a block to work from. Check out our tips and tricks videos for a more in-depth look at the modular configurator. You'll notice after clicking into it, even if you don't use it, you'll get these gray squares in your 2D background. Right click in the 2D background and select remove modular relationship to get rid of these. Lastly is the menu bar across the top of the workspace. Each menu has a drop-down of options. Under File, you'll find all your saving, importing, and exporting options. Edit will give you editing options that would otherwise be accessed with quick commands or by right-clicking. The 3D Garment, 2D Pattern, Sewing, and Materials tabs are all alternative ways of accessing tools and options that can also be found in your toolbars or by right-clicking in the 2D and 3D backgrounds. The avatar menu gives you options for editing your avatar. Some of these options can also be found in the 3D toolbar. Render is going to take you to the internal render engine or allow you to render via close set. Display allows you to hide or show different things in your 2D or 3D windows. Most of these options are also located in the vertical toggle menus in each window. I'll go over these menus in full at the end. Preferences allows you to customize settings within the program, like your gizmo, simulation properties, fit maps, or camera properties. Many of these options are also available by right-clicking in the 2D or 3D backgrounds. Settings will allow you to change your language, adjust user settings, access a plugin, or log out of the software. Help is going to give you options for accessing information to help guide you in using the program. In the top left corner of the 3D and 2D windows, you have vertical toggle menus that allow you to hide and show different attributes within those windows. In 3D, you have attributes related to the garment, garment details, the avatar, fabric views, fit maps, and different options for viewing the surface texture of your avatar. In 2D, you have garment details, pattern options, information and measurements, and different options for viewing the texture of your pattern pieces. If you hover over any of the icons, it'll tell you exactly what it does. And if anything ever looks like it's missing or showing something you don't want to see, always make sure you check these menus first.